Today in the news, we got Raptor Lake showing its teeth again. We're gonna do some Ryzen math and Nvidia shrinks things with AI. What's up guys, I'm Snows, and this is your boot sequence. Before that, let me take a quick second to thank our sponsor, KeysFan. KeysFan.com is where you can save money and buy inexpensive keys for Windows 10 Pro, Windows 11 Pro, or Office 2021. And about those Office 2021 Pro licenses, you can buy them in bundles of up to five now for insanely low prices. You can get your license with the link down below. Just click add to cart and throw the code BSV50 to get the best deal possible and submit your order using PayPal. That's it. Thanks, KeysFan. Let's get started with some CPU news. The war of the next generation is coming quite soon. On the AMD side, the company has been talking a whole lot about the Ryzen 7000 series based on the Zen 4 architecture. We know the average IPC increase, we've seen some phenomenal clock speeds in gaming, and AMD gave us some idea of what we can expect. Over a 15% increase in single threaded performance, and Robert Halleck mentioned a 40% plus increase in multi-threaded work. Workloads. All of these numbers are super impressive, but will it be enough to beat Intel again? I mean, Intel has been working on Raptor Lake, but the company hasn't really been advertising this new architecture that much. Instead, we're left with information coming from leakers and benchmarks of engineering samples. Still though, it looks promising, especially with the leak that we have today. This information comes from BenchLeaks over on Twitter, and it's a Geekbench 5 run of the upcoming 13900K. I just want to add a little grain of salt here before we get into it because the run does have a warning saying that the timer on the system had a problem. So the score is invalid, but I don't think that we should discount it completely. Anyways, in this benchmark, the 13900K scored 2,133 points in the single core section and 23,701 points in the multi-threaded score. That's a really good score. To compare it to the last generation of Intel CPUs, the uh, single core score of the 13900K is about 7% faster than a stock 12900K. Now I'm talking bone stock 12900K here. I took the numbers from a couple of reviewers online who benchmarked it on Geekbench 5. A 12900K can go a little higher if it's pushed, but that's what we're at now. What's really interesting is the uh, multi-core score. It's more than 30% faster than its predecessor here. Now you might say, okay, but AMD said that they would have over a 15% increase in single threaded workloads and 40% in multi when compared to their last generation. Well, yeah, it's a pretty big leap. So let's actually compare Intel's next generation to AMD's next generation in Geekbench 5 using some napkin math. For that, we'll start by taking some 5950X scores here. On average, the uh, stock 5950X scores about 1700 points in the single threaded bench. Now, we don't know what AMD meant by over 15% in single threaded uplift, but Robert Halleck said that AMD was conservative here. Could be 16%, could be 19%, so let's go overboard and tack on a good 25% to that score. That's 2125 points. Now, if we look at the multi-core score, uh, an average 5950X will score 16,500 points. Robert Halleck said that they've reached a 40 plus performance increase, so let's add 45%, and that score is 23,925 points. If we do the comparison, it looks like both companies will have very similar CPUs in terms of performance for the next generation. The difference here though is that the Intel chip is rumored to reach even higher single core performance, up to 2,300 points which would put it in the lead by a good 7%. And at that point, you might ask, well, the power consumption gap is huge. Well, it used to be. Between AMD and Intel, the gap is kind of gone. Raptor Lake is set to keep the same power envelope as Alder Lake, so the max turbo will reach about 240-ish watts. And with AMD's new chip and new platform, they say up to a 170 watt TDP with a PPT of 230 watts. Whether the new Ryzen 7000 chips will actually use that much power is still to be determined, but I don't don't think that a Zen 4 CPU with 16 cores is going to sip power. 
should not have done that motion. Anyways, we're just a couple of months away from both releases, so I'll keep you updated if anything changes. But it looks like we're in for one hell of a choice. What are your thoughts on all this? If Intel was to win it in this next generation, would you still stick to AMD because of their, I don't know, platform longevity? Is price going to dictate your decision or are you going for uh, performance at all costs? Let me know down below. Then we have NVIDIA in the news with the power of AI. The company's researchers recently developed a deep learning model to help chip design. It's called Prefix RL, and it basically optimizes circuits to achieve simpler chip designs. All of that while keeping the same performance, thermals, and latency. Compared to other companies who also use AI in their chip design, NVIDIA managed to make their chip 25% smaller than other AI tools from other companies that do the same thing. It didn't come cheap though. The GPUs that ran the model needed 256 CPU cores each. We don't know how many of those GPUs were there, but it totaled 32,000 GPU hours. This is gonna give Nvidia a huge advantage in their in-house chip designs, for now at least, until somebody figures out a better AI. Anyways guys, that is pretty much it for today's catch up. Hopefully you've enjoyed. Drop a like if you liked it, a comment if you wanna talk about today's stories. Right here is a video that didn't perform well and I would uh, appreciate it if you went and watched it. And right here is uh, the subscribe button. As usual, stay frosty my dudes and I'll see you on the next one. Take care. Honesty. Man you hit, man you hit.